Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and responsibilities by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, in the previous discussions, we were discussing uh, the Jama'ah Salah. We also looked at uh, the leader, the Imam of the Jama'ah Salah, and, and characteristics and attributes that he must have. Um, we also discussed when joining the Salah, if, if you're not there at the beginning and you wanted to join in. I wanted to ask you, Sheikh, when an individual like myself, let's say myself, I'm coming in, the Imam is in Ruku. I hurry up to join the, the congregation. I say Allahu Akbar, but before I get into my Ruku, the Imam stands up or he's moved from his position. What am I supposed to do in that situation? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. Well, there are two options for the musalli to choose from. Um, when the musalli starts the salah with the takbir of al-ihram, and he's not going to catch up with the imam when he's in the Rukur. And uh, in this case, he said the Allahu Akbar, but he missed the Rukur of the Imam. In other words, he missed that Rak'ah in which he just joined the Imam uh, in that Salah. Two options. The first option, either he turns to the Farada intention, so he opts out and he begins to pray as Farada individually. So he makes an intention and he leaves the jama'ah by praying by himself. That's the first option. The second option, he can choose to um, stay in a stand uh, and wait for the imam to come up from the sujood for the second rak'ah. So he joins the imam in the second rak'ah. Of course, if the imam didn't take so long, the, the posture of the salah is now changed. If not, and the Imam quickly, he went to the Ruku' and Sujood and he came up, then he can uh, join the Imam in the second Rak'ah. So, these are two options. Ahsan, Shaykh. No. Shaykh, no, what about when we go to a non-Shia mosque and there's a non-Shia congregation of prayer going on? Are we uh, allowed to join that congregation? Also, if there is a possibility of praying for other you can pray separately by yourself on the side. Should we pray us by ourselves on the side, or should we join the congregation and pray our way? If the one prays with them in jama'ah, of course, his salah would not be accepted. Because we mentioned previously that one of the conditions and the criteria of the imam of the jama'ah, that he must be uh, from the follower of Ahlul Bayt, السلام, 12 imami. And that is a core um, condition with regard to this. So we cannot pray behind anybody who is not uh, the follower of Ahlul Bayt, even those who follow just six Imams, for example. Um, in this case, no, the Salah is not accepted unless he makes the intention of Farada. And he's within the Jama'ah, but he, he prays, he says, recites the Alhamdan Surah by himself. And the intention that he's praying for other, that's fine. Or otherwise, uh, if he prays with them, in other wo words, that he follows the Imam as we do in our Jama'ah Salah, that would not be accepted. Oh, Santa, Santa, thank you for clearing it up. Sheikhna, what is the advice you give um, to those who speak a little loud, especially during Jama'ah prayer, when there's a congregational prayer going, some Sometimes individuals, they speak quite loudly, they have a loud voice or they may disturb or disrupt the prayer. I mean, um, what are we supposed to do with such individuals? Um, what about those who are in the actual congregational prayer and they do things to disrupt the prayer? 
if this constitutes um, nuisance to the crowd there and violation of the respect to the mosque, to the jama'ah, to the imam himself, then this is not permissible. You're not allowed to, uh, to break the sanctity of the mosque and the jama'ah prayer when they're praying and cause uh, nuisance and sounds and, and so forth. Um, and also not to forget that if somebody raises his voice in the salah more than the limit, you know, he starts to shout or, or scream when he recites the, I don't know, the, uh, the ruku' or sujood, in this case, the salah will be batal. Wow. Because it's, it's beyond the, okay. the level of the, uh, of the recitation, you know, the, the voice. Shouldn't be so much high you know, in a shouting or screaming level. That will make the salah batal. And likewise, if somebody doesn't utter the words, uh, if he prays silently, and it doesn't show, that also will make the salah batal. So we have to be in the middle. That when we pray silently, we show, we whisper the salah, uh, the recitation. And when we recite them in loud, we try to make them heard, but not to be so much screaming or shouting uh, level. I sense Sheikh. Sheikh, you know, we were talking about having uh, a non-Shia uh, uh, jama'ah and imam going, uh, having a congregational prayer. And one of the conditions of uh, for us is that the Imam of the Jama'ah has to be Shia. Um, so my question is that is, is this set in stone that you are not allowed to pray behind a Shia Imam? And if not, why not? As in, you know, are we not all Muslim? Are we not all worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As I've explained previously that the six conditions must be met with the Imam of the Jama'ah. And the main one, as I mentioned, to be the Shia of 12 Imams of Ahlul Bayt and the, uh, the Haq uh, belief and doctrine. However, if somebody prays behind such Imam, if he was compelled to pray, sometimes you're at college or university and you have friends who are non-Shia and they encourage you to come and pray with them jama'ah. In this case, if you're compelled, you feel yourself, you have to pray with them. It's a bit difficult to uh, not accept their invitation for the Salah Jama'ah. In this case, you pray with them and you have to go back and repeat the Salah. Because the Salah with the Imam of Jama'ah in which doesn't believe in Ahl al-Bayt is batil and uh, invalidates the Salah. So you must repeat the Salah. Unless, as I've said, you pray it uh, oh. with the intention of Furada. That is a way of exit. Awesome. Sheikhna, can one charge money for leading a jama'ah? Can the imam of the jama'ah charge for this service? Well, it's preferred not to do so. Um, the salah, jama'ah, the adhan, and so forth, uh, they're supposed to be uh, implemented and established every day. These are the duties of the mu'min to um, implement the salah, apply the salah, aqim salati li dhikri, to apply the salah every day. So there must be mu'addin, there must be imam jama'ah, there must be people come to the mosque and pray. So they shouldn't actually uh, be paid by, because there are needs for those who come and offer the salah or offer the adhan, they are, might be in need of such income. Then overall they pay them the income in order for them to be able to live, make living, some kind of income. But um, as the Sayyid mentions that it's preferred not to be paid for such act. Maybe they get paid because they do lectures, for example. They do, uh, for example, teach, for example, students, Arabic language, and so forth. But for the Salah, it's better not to get uh, uh, the money for that. So. I mean, the best way to say is that the uh, an um, or a resident alim, they have a lot of responsibilities, don't they, when they go to a mosque? It's not just that they have to provide lectures and lessons and sometimes juma khutbahs and, 
and also du'a kumil on, on evenings and du'a tawassal on evenings. But also there's a lot of counselling involved, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, um, funeral ceremonies, there's um, marriage ceremonies and so forth. So being paid for the overall service, which may include uh, Jama'a Salah, that's okay. But being, for example, if I don't perform the Jama'a uh, uh, Jama Salah, I don't get paid that much money. This is where it becomes makro, this is where it becomes an issue, correct? Well, it is important that we do not treat these uh, worship acts as part of, of our uh, trading or, or, or in a way of um, transactions, you know, that's like buying and selling. These are at the end of the day worship and we have to, we are committed to attend these places and offer the prayers, offer the adhan as well, the muaddin as well, the same situation. So it's better not to concentrate on these issues, materialistic issues. And uh, it's better that the one offers the service, as you mentioned, in overall, and he gets paid because he's teaching, he's doing such and such, he's, let's say, reading the contracts of marriage and so forth, divorce and so forth, and uh, to be paid as overall. But to be specific for that, if you don't pay, then I don't, don't pray, that's not the right way of dealing with such uh, Ilahi worship, divinely worship, in which um, has such a great reward that we read about. If it ex exceeds 10 people, then nobody can uh, mm -hmm. count the rewards except Allah SWT. Ahsan, Shaykhna. Shaykhna, it's been stated that one shouldn't, um, you know, take congregational prayer lightly. One shouldn't miss out, especially when you have no reason to miss out. Um, so you just, I don't know, you just, I don't feel like going to pray Jama'a Salah. You know, you shouldn't do that. Is this an actual order? Is this is this uh, ahkam for us, or is this just showing us how important it is to to get involved with the Jama'a Salah and how uh, severe the undesirability is to avoid um, praying Jama'a Salah, especially when you have no um, you know no reason to do so, no justification. Well, attending the Jama'a Salah is something desirable and mustahab and very encouraged. However, if people took this Salah of the Jama'ah lightly and didn't care about it and the Imam left, was left alone, for example, for many days, maybe one or two people just praying behind him or not even one single person. In this case, uh, if it contributes to taking the Salah lightly, then they have to in somehow arrange and uh, inform people that, they, you know, at least we need some people to attend, four or five, and to keep the sanctity of the mosque, the sanctity of the Salah Jama'ah to be held and not to be left alone because this is the mosque. This is the place in which people should attend and gather and uh, perform the Salah. Where can you offer the Salah other than the mosques? The mosques are there for the worship, for the Salah. Aqim al-Salat, the Dhikri. So we go to the mosque, pray the Jama'ah, and we try to get the rewards an, as much as we can, and avoid um, the non-attendance and being careless about the Jama'ah Salah, in which we will be losing the thawab in, in dunya and akhirah. Of course, the thawab in dunya, sometimes you see that it's more materialistic. You get the rizq. You get all the bounties in dunya, and in akhirah, of course, we need the hasanat. وفي الآخرة حسنة that's what we need that in آخرة as well we gain more thawab by attending and um, acknowledging this great salah in which will bring the brothers the mu'mineen the faithfuls together in one place in one gathering in, in rows together to stand and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together Ascent, Sheikh. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Especially on this discussion, and that was the last episode that we had on the topic of Jama'ah. Inshallah, uh, we encourage you all to get participate in congregational prayer, as the thawab is so much that even um, the angels, the jinn, and man were to write it, with all the trees being pens and all the waters being ink, we still wouldn't be able to count 
um, the amount of tawab that you'd get if there was more than 10 people. Inshallah, you will be praying in congregation and also me and the Sheikh will be also there in congregation wherever you are in the world. Please remember us in your du'as and remember the Imam of our time. And inshallah, we'll see you on the next episode of Hakam SOS. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, ah, ah.